Now this will be the part that's cut out. Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. I've started another project and this is something I've never done before, but I've always wanted to do. And that's to build a small covered bridge, like the bridges that are still standing in certain areas of the country. I always thought these were just beautiful works of art and the craftsmanship that went into these bridges. And some have been standing for many, 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 many years. Now, I've never built anything like this, so I have actually designed my own style of a covered bridge. I'm sitting on part of it. I'm sitting on some oak timbers here, and I've got everything pretty much sawn out on my sawmill, but they're not worked out. So I invite you to go along with me, and let's enjoy this, and uh, we'll see what we come up with when we get finished. I have three gorgeous 18-foot they're six by 12 now they start out as a seven by 12 from the sawmill and i trued them up on my band mill make sure everything was the tops and the sides were square with each other but these are post oak which is a pretty weather resistant oak that we have in our area a white oak is very very similar to this and i'm really looking forward to using these timbers these will be the girders they will be what holds everything up and i think three of them definitely will do it I have two 20-foot 6x8s southern yellow pine that I'm going to use for the top plates, which I think will be more than adequate enough to, to carry everything. This stack of stuff here is rafter material, tie beam material, and floor joist. The floor joist will be a 4x6, the rafters will be 3x6, and the tie beams will be a 4x6. So I've got enough stuff here to last me a day or two these are the posts these are finished they'll have a tenon on the top and a tenon on the bottom these bottom four corners of the bridge will have a post that's designated for its particular corner i'm putting a, a chamfer on these i'm coming down six inches from the top and this point here will actually be well as we get into this i'll show you it's actually seven and a half inches from the bottom of the post up to uh, where the top of the floor is and then from there to where the chamfer starts is eight inches i have a six by six red cedar timber here these will be the post that uh, goes on the sides there'll be eight of these all total and i'll take you along with me as we work this this out and i'll show you what i'm going to turn it into now you may be wondering why i'm working the post out first before i start the top plate or actually the girder which is what you would normally start with but the reason is, since each one of these will have a tenon on the top and the bottom, I like to have my tenon finished and then cut the mortise to match the tenon. I've just always been under the impression that it works better for me to have the tenons cut and then cut a mortise to match the tenon. And the first thing I'll do, I'll take my power planer and I'll plane all four sides of this. Now, when I saw this on the mill, I took a square and I made sure that it was square. It just makes it so much better if your all your sides are square with each other. So when I plane this, hopefully I'll pretty much keep it like that. I'm going to plane all four sides and I'm only going to have to make one pass. And so I've got this thing set just the depth that I want it to be. There's one side, just roll it over, and get another one. Well, it smells so good. I'm going to take my framing square. This will be the outside of the post. Now, there's a reason for having a designated outside, and I'll show you that as I go along. But for now, I'm just going to sight this. And it's real straight. It's going to lay my framing square up there and make a mark. And I'm using my uh, beam saw to cut these ends off. I'm marking this at 8 foot and 8 inches. 
it'll be the total length of the post, including the two tenons, the one at the, the bottom and the one at the top. I'll get my mark across there. After I get the ends cut, I'm going to take my black lumber crayon and I'm just going to make a little arrow which will designate the outside. And I'm going to make a couple of lines here. So when I go to cut these tenons, I want to make sure that I'm cutting, cutting it off this way and not make a mistake. After I get it up, I level it up just like I'm going to do a log to, to, get, to get everything true. Because I want this portion of the timber, the bottom, and the top, I want them to be true with each other. So I've made sure I've got my level on here, and that's right on the money. It's on the money right there, and I've already checked the other end, and it's trued up. This plane here and that plane down there are together. So when I lay out the tenons, I'll be laying out from the outside of the timber, of, of the post rather. Now I'm going to take my framing square. I'm just going to hook it on there. And I'm going to mark five inches, which is coming up from the bottom. That will be the length of the tenon on the bottom of the post. And I can just square that all the way around. And I'll transfer that down down the side here all the way around it and then I can roll that over move that little wedge out of the way and I can check to see how close I am by transferring those lines down and that's right on the money so I can mark that one since my tenon will be cut on this portion of it, I'm going to turn it up and measure from the inside face. I'll hook my square on the outside and I'm going to mark, let me get back here a little bit further. I'm going to mark two inches and four inches back there. And I'm going to come out here to the end, making sure that this leg is flush, flat on there. And I'm going to mark two, four inches and two inches. So if this is a little bit more or a little bit less than six inches, this is like six and a sixteenth in the width of it. Everything will still be true from the outside back. I'm just going to make a line across there. That'll be what I cut. And while I have this in this position, I'm going to go ahead and score this line all the way across and down through here. And I've told you this before, but I'll tell you again, I'm just covering the line when I make a score mark, just barely covering it. And I always score on the waist side, the part that's going to be cut off. Then I'll get the other side. And I'll just roll it over. And I'll get this side scored. Now this will be the part that's cut out, or cut off. This side over here is my control. It's the outside. So I'll hook my square, just like I did before, on the outside. And I mark this at two and four. Because my tenon will be two inches thick. And I'll do the same thing with my little ruler. Line up those points there. Okay, now I'm going to score this. It's just a repeat of what I did on the other side. Mark this on the end. Just 
just continue all the way around scoring it. And I'm just going to connect these two points together. And when I cut that with a chainsaw, it'll give me something to uh, a line to go by. Okay, I'm ready now to get my skill saw. And I'm going to make two passes here with the skill saw. I'll make one right up close to the line. Then I'll come out a little ways and make another cut so that when I'm cutting this with a chainsaw, I won't have a tendency to go past and in past my line here. I'll hold my chainsaw back a little bit from this point and, and cut this piece out. Okay, this is the top of the post, and the only difference between it and the bottom is the length of the tenon. It's only four inches long, you can see there. And I'm measuring from the shoulder of the tenon at the bottom, I'm coming up seven feet and 11 inches to where I'll actually cut this out. And I've already got this laid out and scored and marked, and it's ready to go. I brought you in here pretty close so you can see what I'm doing. On this block of wood, just a piece of yellow pine, I put it on my miter saw and I got a good square cut on it. And I can take my chisel and I can hold it up here. And what I've done is just line the end of this block, this edge down here, on my score mark. And that lets me, if I can hold my chisel, be able to cut right along that score line and just cut that down a little bit. So I'm using a really sharp chisel. I just sharpened it up and I'm just going to do some light taps. I'm right at the edge of that score line so it's a little bit difficult to hold my chisel still. But I'm just leaning back against my block of wood here and I'm just going down through there. And I'm not hammering away, I'm just little light taps with my mallet. And that lets me get started cleaning this shoulder up here. I'm going to get another chisel. This is an inch chisel, and I like to use an inch because I'm not having to press down on this end grain so hard as I would with a two inch chisel cutting twice the amount of wood. So I'm just kind of barely coming straight down, just a little at a time. Now I can remove some of this, this wood here that was left from when I made the saw curves. Just kind of get it out of the way. Now, there is a reason I like to do this part of the tenon first. And a friend of mine told me this uh, years and years and years ago, and he was right. If you do this part of it first, then you come back and try to cut the shoulder part. When you start pressing down with your chisel, you're always going to be cutting deeper into what you've already cleaned up. And so I'll do this first. If I cut down here too much, then I still have the chance of cleaning that out across there. Because if you go down below your line here, you're actually weakening that tenon just a little bitty bit. And we don't want to do that. We want to keep it strong. So I'm just making light passes, just straight down. Now you need a sharp chisel when you're doing this. I'm not trying to take the full width of the chisel as I do this. Now 
Now I'm just beginning to see my score mark right here at the edge. And I don't want to go past that. Being real careful with it. Okay, I see all of it all the way down. And I can come back and do a little cleaning up going across here. And I'll check it with a straight edge. Okay, I got a little bit of a bump right in there. Just keep checking. I'm getting pretty close. Now you can do a very, very slight undercut from here to here and from here down but you don't want to take very much out here because you want that support and it's just it's pretty close right there now i'll take my two inch chisel and i'll start working this down to my score line when i see that score line i stop Now I can come back and cut some of that relief there. You have to kind of follow the grain of the wood when you're doing this. And the grain in cedar, especially around a knot, has a tendency to change quite often and run different directions. I'm coming just to where I can see that score line. And I'll come back in this line that I made on the end for my, where I can see it with the chainsaw, I'll come back down to it. This basically is the same thing as cleaning up a tenant on where I splice the logs together or cleaning up the notch. I'm down to the score line. I'm just going to take my little yellow Crayola and mark that where I don't go past it. Now I could use my two inch chisel and clean this up, but I have another, it's a small Japanese slick that was gifted to me and it's such a pleasure to use, so I'm going to use it. I could use my big slick, but this is just smaller and this feels good in my hand. Just slowly start working that down. You don't have to get in a big hurry with it. There's a lot of pleasure in this for me. And you can come back if you've got some frazzles up there against the shoulder. I just use a little bit of a rocking motion like that. So that way I'm not cutting too deep. Just enough to clean that up there. Just kind of working with the grain because it's going to change on you in this with this type of wood. You have to be careful or it'll want to splinter out on you. It's one reason to keep your tools really, really sharp. You want to be careful that you don't go too deep and go below your score lines there. Now I could clean this entirely up, this slick here, but I've got another hand plane that I'm going to use. It's kind of made pretty much for what I'm going to show you. This is a, a shoulder plane. You see that the blade will go right up against that corner there, pretty close. Most planes, the blade don't come all the way out. They'll have a part of the plane sole here and over here, and it won't let the blade get all the way into the corner. But this plane is designed to do that very thing. And the handle will turn either direction. 
and it's a it's pretty sharp so I'm just going to go across there and when I see my yellow begin to disappear I know I'm really getting close might need to bring that back just a little bit it's a little bit aggressive yeah that feels better So I'm able to go right up against that, that shoulder there. And I can see my score line here. I'm nearly down to it. And I can take my straight edge and I can check and see how flat that is. And that's just pretty flat. Maybe a little bit of a hump right there that I'll get. Okay, I think I've got it. And I can come back and take that little bit right in the very corner that my plane didn't reach. Just with a little bit of a rocket motion. Okay, we've got the tenons cleaned up, the cheeks of the tenons on, on both sides. Now this post here will be oriented on the bridge as the southeast corner post. And I've got southeast or just SE there. Now, what I'm going to do is come from the edge here, which will be the outside of the post. And I'm going to come in an inch and a quarter. I'll mark that with my little square, inch and a quarter, and I'll take that off. Now the reason I'm doing that is if I'd left this full width here, you would see this edge of the tenon on the end of the oak girder. And I don't want to do that, I just want to see a nice clean line down this side here. So I'm going to relieve an inch and a quarter and that'll still let me have plenty tenon in the mortise. And so I've, I've come in an inch and a quarter here. I'll still have all this bearing here and then all this bearing after this is removed all the way down. So while I have that there, I'll go ahead and score that. Get down here where I can see it. Get over here on the way, make sure I'm cutting on the waist side. And I'll make a little mark on the end. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. And I can come back now and clean this up just like I did on these two shoulders here. And you start paring it down. What that will do when it starts going into its mortise it'll give it a little bit of a relief there so it'll go in easier do that on all four edges okay now that's got this complete except for one more little detail Get the right color Crayola here. I'm going to measure this. I know it's two inches thick, but I'm going to measure it across here. And that's just a tiny bit under. We could probably call it four and three quarters. That's what we're going to call it. And I'll write that down so that when I cut the pocket in the girder, I'll know how far back to 
come, well, I'll be coming back an inch and a quarter from the end of it for this shoulder. And then from there on back would be another four and three quarters of an inch. After I got these the cheeks on the tendon cleaned up, I came back and I'm coming in a half inch. I'm just taking my square and marking it there and, and drawing my line on there and scoring it. And I've got a little small skill saw that's set real light. Uh, it's a little bit less than uh, my line here, the depth of it. And I'll just make a series of saw curves and just clean that up. And that'll give me a real clean place right here all the way around to uh, sit down on or actually this will go up into the uh, the top plate that'll be seen and it'll look real clean there I'm going to put a chamfer on the corner of these posts. And this is the top and of course that's the bottom. And on this is the outside face. And what I'm doing, I'm coming up from the shoulder on the, on the tenon down there. I'm coming up 45 and a half inches where my chamfer will actually start. And I'm coming down from the top six inches where the chamfer will actually start. And I've made two marks here. I've made one at 45 and a half, and then I drop back at 43 and a half. I'll clamp a board on that 43 and a half, and I'll do another one here at the top. I've got a mark set at four inches from the shoulder, and I'll just put that on there and clamp it down. I'm going to roll this over and get the inside face up. This is the bottom. And on the, the inside face, I'm coming up 15 and a half to where the chamfer will actually start. And so I'll make my two inch mark back at 13 and a half. Now the reason I'm coming up 15 and a half I'll be using a four by six for the floor joist and then an inch and a half of flooring. So that will give me from the chamfer to the top of the floor will be eight inches. I like to come up eight and come down six on a, on a six by six post. It just seems to look right to me. And I'll square that across. I'll get my board on there, get it clamped down, and be ready to go. Now the last thing I'll do is give this a light sanding on all four sides. I'll be able to get rid of uh, little bitty planer marks, uh, pencil marks, and just clean this up and make it look really pretty. So we have a completed post with the tennis cut, all the chamfers on and sanded and ready to go. Now, could I have done this faster? Yes, I probably could have, but I might not have got the really clean cuts that I really like and the real sweet fits that I enjoyed seeing. And I'm kind of the old adage that uh, you can run the interstate and get there quicker, or you can take the back roads and enjoy the scenery. And that's what I like to do.